Hi all. So now that we've reached day four of our product design sprint, we're going to start prototyping our solution. Now you might be asking, what is a prototype? And just to kind of give a brief summary of what it involves, it's normally some kind of lightweight, superficial demonstration of your product. So what the person sees or maybe how they interact with something and um, but there's no heavy building on the back end so you can have prototypes in physical products so for example a prototype of a car might be the outside shell of the car what people see but the car doesn't actually drive there's no engine in that car in technology um, if you're running this product design sprint on on a piece of technology uh, that generally means a prototype flow where you can see screens and potentially interact with those screens but there's no actual web development going on in the background or minimal if there is any um, so we're going to explain what this prototype looks like or what a prototype looks and feels like by using our travel bucket example and um, so again just to reiterate here we kind of had three steps that we wanted to address and um, the main step was around influencers being able to create uh, curated lists of where they have visited and to be able to share that online easily. So that was one area that we wanted to test that we identified had a lot of risk involved, but a lot of um, potential upside to the project. And um, secondly, we wanted uh, users, so uh, social media uh, consumers, to be able to add that item um, to their bucket list so that they're able to try to emulate their influencer idols. Um, and then finally, we wanted those users again to get last minute deals or to get notifications that they can now actually visit the places of, of their dreams. So again, that kind of ties us nicely back to our original goal of to create a sustainable travel company that enables users to discover. So seeing off, their, off the influencers to remember. So it's recorded for them and then to visit the place of their dreams. So that's where they're getting their deals from. So to show you what a prototype looks like, um, in technology or in Thoughtbot at least. And we use this product called Figma. Uh, and Figma is basically a, a design tool. Um, so as you can see here, we've got some rough work and some precedence and inspiration, but down here we've got our prototypes, okay? And so what Figma it basically is, is a series of screens that are linked together with different actions. Um, so these screens all kind of interlock uh, based on specific actions. It's not a complete app, so you don't have, say, a settings page, for example, or a login page, because those things weren't critical to the success of this project. They're fairly standard, so we didn't really need to design those. We were just trying to design those critical areas uh, that we identified earlier on in the sprint as being pivotal to the success of the project. So that's what we've done. Um, in terms of the influencers, sharing a compiled list of, of places that they visited. That's this flow that we have here on top. Um, in terms of a user seeing that place and adding it to one of their own lists, that's this second flow here in the middle. So I'll link together with screens. And the final flow is just around a user getting a deal. And that's what we have going on here. So what we would do then in a normal testing session, once we build something like this, when those screens are linked together, they essentially look something like this. So this will look like a real app um, for, for your testers. So let's just walk through the flow we've done here. Um, by the way, this should take about a day to put together, maybe a day and a half, depending on how detailed or how big you want your product to be. But typically about a day would, would do this for us. Um, so again, that influencer flow. So here they are on the kind of homepage for our app. So they click to build their bucket list. So we can see kind of a profile icon here. We can see a list of bucket lists that they've already created here and they've the option to create a new list. They've also got this section down here of lists uh, that inspire them. So these will be uh, curated by other content creators that have shared them online. So that's just something to note there. Um, but in this case, we want to add something to a bucket list. Um, and for this hypothetical, our influencer here is in New York. So she clicks into her New York uh, bucket list and you can see kind of some of the main sites here. So Times Square, Madison Square Gardens and Empire State Building, etc. So once we're in here, she's going to want to create something new. So a new entry here. So we click this plus icon. We can start editing here then. So upload a photo, 
put in a name, status, location, add a couple of tags so we know what's going on and a couple of notes and save this to the bucket list. So now we can see this Central Park Bistro, which is a fish restaurant um, located on, on Central Park has now been added to the list. Um, our influencer can switch over to a map view and um, so she can see this uh, come up here um, and see some of the other things. So maybe activities or other restaurants or accommodation um, and she can flick back to the, to the list view. Um, and what we want her to do here is just be able to share the place easily. That was the goal of this. So we click this big share button. You can see that that link has been copied to the clipboard. And that is essentially our influencer flow. So on the reverse side, so our user, again, going back to going back to this step here, we've, we've built a prototype to test step three and step four here. So we're now looking to test step five. So for our user, they're going to see an Instagram post like this. So by that same influencer, and you can see here it's lunch with a view and they can follow my full trip here on this link. So our user clicks through on this link. It opens up their travel bucket and they can see that, okay, this was created by Roz Purcell and um, we can see, you know, the tags and the bits of information around it. So we want to add that to my bucket list. So we're going to pick out, thankfully, we also have a New York City bucket list. So we don't need to create a new one, which you could do, but let's add it to the New York one. So we get a little confirmation graphic that that's been added to the bucket list. And again, we can now see our curated list of things we want to we want to see in New York. And again, we've got that map view option so we can see things here um, and go back to our list view as well. So it's fairly straightforward, but now we have that functionality working. And from there, we can just go back to our main list of places. And again, we've got other lists of places curated by different people maybe that we follow on the app. So it's kind of becoming a little bit of a full travel app, I guess, in that sense. And the final flow we discussed was this step seven, which is around kind of uh, providing targeted deals or last minute things to help people visit the places on their on their bucket lists. So in that scenario, and um, we've got a deal flow like this. So you've got your phone, you get a notification from Travel Bucket, which is return flights to NYC for just 99 euro. So let's click through here Again, it opens it up. So now you can see I'm in the deal section of the app and I can see all the things that I had listed in New York in my list. These are all the things I can see if I, you know, avail of this offer. So return flights to NYC with Lufthansa for 99 euro. So take me to that deal and I'm through to Lufthansa. And from there, I'll be able to, to book those flights. So that's our basic flow. That is our prototype. Um, those are the three areas that we identified as being the riskiest. So we're, what we're going to do on day five is move forward with these flows and we're going to test them with real users. So the goal will be to try to figure out what works, what doesn't work, what users like, what they don't like, and what changes we need to make going forward. But that is the tool that we have put together to be able to validate our assumptions and to be able to prove that we're going in the right direction or pivot if needs be. Now for you, Figma might not be within your skill set or within your reach to conceivably make a detailed prototype with. There are other options. This is one from Google Ventures and we can share the link to this video. This is a paper prototype when you essentially draw out each thing and you get users to kind of press buttons as, as they're showing here in the video. Um, and that can even have little interactions like opening drop downs or things move around. We'll link to that video in our resources that you'll be able to look at that if paper prototyping is an option that you want to follow. In truth, paper prototyping is not that effective. Um, it can help a little bit to bridge a gap, but definitely something like Figma is a little bit more uh, effective. If your goal is to have a robust prototype that you can test with users, you do also have the option of trying to create a prototype in Miro itself. So for example, this is a sample of say our first screen from the prototype that I've created in Miro. Um, it's very straightforward in that it's just a copied um, image. So we just copy that image. I just created a couple of different text boxes, played around with the fonts and you know the coloring, and we were able to add colors here by just putting in a hexadecimal code. Um, and same thing here. So we've got fonts, but again, compared to Figma, it's not really going to stack up. Uh, we've got a more limited selection of fonts 
um, you got kind of more limited colors and you're not going to be able to link the screens together the way we can in Figma. So you'll just have to do one screen at a time and get people to look at them. Uh, essentially, it'll, it'll look something a little bit like this, but you know, Figma is specifically designed for this. So you can have kind of grids um, to help you lay things out and you know, more font options, more control, that kind of thing. So we would recommend using a tool like Figma if you have that capacity. If you don't have that ability or skill set within your team, the first three days of a sprint are still really, really valuable. And we'd encourage you to reach out to ThoughtBot if you feel like building a prototype is something that you want a bit of help with. Please feel free to reach out to us and we can give you some pointers uh, or potentially team up to collaborate on that prototype building so that you can test your product idea and your solution accurately with your users on day five of the sprint. So that's it for prototyping. And uh, when you're ready and when you have your prototype in place, feel free to move on to the next video.